now we have come to lay our crown before you in praise. And we say, Casting crowns and lifting hands and bowing hearts is all we've come to do. We cast our crown at your feet. For you alone deserve the glory, and bowing us is all we've come to do. Can you join me? Say, say casting crowns and lifting hands and bowing us is all we come to do. We were made for that purpose. It's meant to be opened, explored, pursued. It's made to be read, reread, applied, and used. The sword of the Spirit 
the Word of God with wisdom life-changing to lead us on. It's made for guidance to teach us His ways, showing what's true, right, and worthy of praise. It's meant to be hidden deep in our hearts, daily examined as the morning starts. No greater glimpse of God do we have, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Good evening, brethren. Thank you for joining us tonight for our Bible study. Indeed, Father, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because you are an amazing God. You are the everlasting Father. You are the changeable changer. Thank you for your mercy and your grace upon our lives. Thank you for bringing us to another time of prayers another time of studying your word, another time of fellowshipping with you. That the adoration be unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for opening up your right hand of righteousness. Thank you for how far you've taken us this year. Thank you for your mighty hand that is sustaining us. That the adoration be unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, ancient of days. The Lord who rule and reign in majesty. Glory be to your holy name. Daddy, we are in your presence once again tonight to come and learn at your feet. Dear Holy Spirit, inspire us in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, speak through me, oh Lord, to bless everyone listening to me in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my Father, we pray that we will be doer of your word. We will not deceive ourselves in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We appreciate you, Lord. We thank you for your love. Thank you for caring. Thank you because you are an amazing God. Glory be to your name, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Once again, I welcome everyone to tonight's Bible study. The Lord has been so faithful. The Lord has been so good unto us. We bless his holy name. For the past two weeks, uh, we, we logged on unto Light of Detroit. And this uh, past week, we hook up with our ministers and um, the workers conference that just concluded in Dallas. We bless God for his grace and his mercy upon our lives. We thank God for what he's doing at this time. The Lord of heaven We continue to be with us and he will walk his perfect works in us in the mighty name of Jesus. If you follow what is really going on in um, present day, you will agree with me that uh, we are living in the world of deception, where truth is taking the backstage, you know, of our daily life, that is getting more and more difficult for people to say the truth and live by the truth. So tonight, we want to look at the major theme, displacing the strong man, displacing the strong man, but we will be talking about the lying spirit, the lying spirit. As I said, we are living in a world where alternate truth has become the order of the day. We are living in a dangerous time because it's increasingly becoming difficult to say the truth or to stand by the truth at all times. But as children of God, we are called into a life of righteousness, into a life of telling the truth at all times, because our God is truth. It's difficult for people now to differentiate between lie 
and truth. But children of God, we must know that this is a plan of the devil in order to fill our heart with the lying spirit, to fill our heart, you know, in believing that saying the truth does not matter. But that is not what we are calling to. Remember that our time is very short. We do not have much time left. That is why we need to rise up as children of the kingdom. We need to rise up and displace every strong man that will not allow us to fulfill the God-ordained destiny and purpose for our life. That will not allow the church of God to fulfill destiny. And I pray tonight, the hand of the Lord will be upon each and every one of us. It will open our eyes and our heart unto the truth. We accept it and we will run with it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are called to walk the walks of him who have called us into his kingdom. That was the theme of the just concluded ministers and workers conference. Why it is day. Why it is day. We must walk the walks of our Father. We must walk the walks of, of our God who have called us. Because our time is very short. Because of the urgency of time. Because we need to go out and win souls. We need to be the, the, the you know, the face of hope to many. We need to let people see the truth of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why this study tonight is very, very important. We must displace every strong man on our way to destiny. Prior to this, in our last Bible study, you know, the one we have just concluded the series on Holy Spirit. And one of the things the teachers who, who, who taught us during those series, you know what, that Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth because it's going to remind us the truth. That is the reason why we must pay attention to this in order for the kingdom of God to expand, in order for the eyes of people to be open to the truth. Our Bible text tonight is found in the book of 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22 from verse 6. 1 Kings 22 from verse 6. And the Bible reads, Then the king of Israel gathered the prophet together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go against Ram uh, Ramoth Gilead to fight, or shall I refrain? So they said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into their hand, into the, into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlia, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Joseph had said, Let not the king say such things. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring Micaiah, the son of Imla, quickly. The king of Israel and Joseph, had, the king of Judah, having put on their robes, sat each on his throne at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah, the son of Chinana, had made horns of iron for himself and said, Thus saith the Lord, with this you shall go, on, with this you shall go the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hand. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Now listen, the words of the prophet with one accord encourage the king 
please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. And Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. Then he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramogiliad, or shall we refrain? And he answered him, go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. So the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, This have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that you would not prophesy good concerning me but evil? Then Micaiah said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on, the, on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will persuade Ahab to go up, that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner, another spoke in that manner. Then the spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, In what way? So they said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in his mouth, in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Verse 23, therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. And the Lord has declared disaster against you. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. The lying spirit. The lying spirit is one of the strong men that we need to be careful of, that we need to displace in order for us to enjoy and to enter into the harvest that God has prepared for us. What, are, what is the lying spirit? They are the fallen heavenly beings. They are fallen angels. They are demonic spirits. According to the book of John, the book of John, chapter 8, John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. And the Bible reads, you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. It was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. So they are, lying spirit is the fallen angel. They are demonic spirits. And what is the agenda of the lying spirit? The lying spirit deceives men into rejecting God and to reject the free gift of salvation. They make it difficult for those who are possessed by them. They make it difficult for them to tell the truth. It, they make it easy for them to lie. When they speak what comes out of their mouth, it's nothing but lie. And one thing about this spirit is that this, they operate in all spheres of life. It does not matter whether in the church of God, in the secular, in the government, the lying spirit operates anywhere, anyhow. And they convince people that there is no God. That is why in Psalm 14, in Psalm 14, verse 1, the book of Psalm chapter 14, Psalm 14, verse 1, it said, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. When a man is possessed with this with lying spirit, begin to say in his heart that there is no God. 
that line spirit made men to believe that our God is loving and that a loving God will not cast away his creation into eternal damnation. Because they want to make people to get trapped in that belief system that God is loving. That a loving God cannot be so wicked to throw men into eternal hell. The line spirit will make men to believe that God is loving. I can continue my sin. And it will never, it will never throw me into hell at the end of my life. Those spirits make people to become indifferent about the cost associated with actions and choices that they make. Especially those actions that are pleasurable to the flesh, but they are contrary to the will of God. They make it difficult for them to think that God will reward either good or bad, depending on what you sow. In the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, Matthew 13 from verse 14, the Bible says, Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. The lying spirit blind the heart of people and block their heart from receiving the truth. They make them to become indifferent to those things that are not godly, but that are pleasurable to the flesh. But one thing we must know is that our God is truth. Our God is truth. John chapter 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. The Bible says, Jesus said to him, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Our God is truth. That is why he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, it is expected of us who are the children of God, who are called out from darkness into his marvelous light. Those who are called to walk the walks. Of our Father. We must practice truth in all things. We must say truth at all times. Because truth is a shield. Truth is a weapon of offense and defense. According to the book of John chapter 8 from verse 31. John 8, from verse 31. And the scripture read, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, and you are my disciples in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Truth is a weapon of offense and defense. Also, in Psalm 91, Psalm 91, verse 4, Psalm 91, verse 4, and the scripture says, For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the work of your hand. Sorry, that's Psalm 92. Psalm 91, verse 4. 
He says, he shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wing, you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Truth is a weapon of offense and defense. Therefore, when truth is removed from the life of a person, when that weapon of offense and defense is removed from the life of a person as a result of yielding to a lying spirit, a man becomes susceptible to satanic manipulation and possession. And what that does is that it made God to step aside because our God cannot harbor untruthfulness. Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Romans chapter 1, I'll read from verse 21, Romans chapter 1 from verse 21, scripture says, because although they knew God and they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the, the glory of incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. When a man remove the shield of truth, he opened himself unto the attack of the enemy and the manipulation of Satan. And as Bible says in here, because they do not retain God, because they do not want to glorify him, they were given up unto a reprobate mind to do things that are not convenient because they exchange the truth of God for the lie. A man will become exposed to the attack of the enemy. And that's what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. Remember, we are talking about displacing the strong man. And our focus tonight is the lying spirit. In the book of Acts chapter 5, there was a story about Ananias and Sapphira. Because he says in verse 1 of Acts chapter 5, But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostle's feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Because the shield of truth the weapon of offense and defense was removed because they opened their heart to the manipulations of the enemy. And what was the end of Ananias and Sapphira, his wife? Because they lied to the Holy Spirit. They, they, they paid with their life. Remember, God is truth. Also, our God is suffering. He is a suffering God. He is suffering over his creation. Our God is not restricted in what or whom he can use to accomplish his purpose. Because we may want to raise a question. Because in our Bible text of 1 Kings chapter 2, because we read that the lying spirit from the Lord filled the heart of the prophet of 
King Ahab. And they prophesied to him what he wanted to listen to. You may want to ask a question. We say our God is truth, and our God cannot do evil. Our God cannot lie. Therefore, why will the lying spirit move from the Lord and enter into the mouth of the prophet of Herb? It's because our God is suffering. He can use anything at all that he created to fulfill his eternal purpose and agenda. Because all the creation of God are under his authority, both principalities and power. Those things that on earth and under the earth and those things that is in heaven, they are under his authority and at his command, they must obey him. Our God cannot lie, but our God can use anything at all that he has created to achieve his purpose on earth. So he chooses people and spirits, both good and evil, to bring about his purpose, to bring about his divine plans, to bring about what he has purpose in his mind to do in order to bring glory to himself. Remember, in Daniel chapter 4, verse 35, Daniel chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, verse 35. There is something about our God in that Bible verse. It says, and at the, at the end of time, I, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes, I'm reading from verse 34, to heaven. And my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Verse 35. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the heaven of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? Our God is suffering. He can use anything to achieve his purpose. After he finished with Nebuchadnezzar, after he was on exile for a season, he said, my understanding came back to me. And then he said that our God does according to his will in the heaven of heaven and among the inhabitants of heart. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? So God is suffering. That is why he allowed the lying spirit to possess the prophet of Heab and they prophesied to him what he wanted to hear. The reason why God allows that is for him to achieve a purpose. And in the life of Heab is for him to melt out judgment to Heab. So also the book of Job Job chapter 1, Job chapter 1, from verse 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? 
So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? When sons of God were meeting, Satan also came to join them in that meeting. And God permitted him because he wanted to achieve an eternal purpose in the life of Job. God permitted him, if you read further, just to touch him, but not his life. So, God can use anything, both spiritual, physical, all his creation, to achieve his eternal purpose. The Lord himself does not lie, but he can send others to deceive people. The Lord himself does not lie. In the case of Ahab, he did that in order for a judgment. Because Ahab needed to be judged. We will soon get to that. In Psalm 18, verse 30, Psalm 18, verse 30, the Bible says, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in Him. The way of our God is perfect. Our Lord is exceedingly gracious, but is not an indulgent God. So when people persistently oppose the truth, when they persistently allow the lying spirit to take hold of them, it will hand them over to that lying spirit. And that is exactly what happened in the life of here. It will harden their heart from the truth. As we read in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 32, it was obvious that Ahab did not want to obey the truth of the Lord. So the Lord himself sent him a lie. And that he did by putting a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophet. There is a lesson for us to learn here, brethren. Tonight, I want us to take an audit of our life. Ask yourself, are you living a lie? Have you opened your heart to spirit of lie to come and possess you? So that it's not become so difficult for you to believe the truth. If you're in that situation tonight, the Lord will deliver you from that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. As we we're told uh, during, you know, the, the message on Sunday... We were told about generational father. And we also made to understand that uh, whatever you do is transferable to your children. Though there are not scientific proof that such a gene is found in man and could be transferable. But certain traits have been transferred from fathers, from parents, to their children. Because when you look at the life of Ahab, Ahab has been living, you know, the life of, is, has been living in lie. That was why it was so easy for him to be deceived because his heart has been hardened to the truth of the word of God. 
In the book of 1 Kings chapter 16, 1 Kings chapter 16, we want to see who is this Ahab? Why will the lying spirit possess him that much? 1 Kings chapter 16, in verse 29, the Bible says, In the 38 years of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, became king over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. So Ahab was the son of a former king. Who was this former king? The Bible said the son of Omri. So he continued the sin of his father according to chapter, verse 33 of that same first king chapter 16. Verse 3 says, And Ahab made a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger and all the, than all the king of Israel who were before him. Ahab continued the evil of his father. He even surpassed it because the Bible says he did that evil more than any other king before him. Like we are told this past Sunday in our message, be careful of what you sow. What are you modeling to your children? Because it will not end with you. They are all transferable. If you sow the spirit of lie in them, remember, they are going to reap it more than what you can ever think or imagine. So Ahab continued in his rebellion against God by not obeying the prophet. He did worse than his father, worse than any other king in Israel. Because he saw his father doing it. And he did more. Brethren, be careful of what you are sowing. Because when the harvest comes, you are going to reap in abundance. In 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18, in verse 18, Ahab has this tendency of not obeying the prophet of God. And he answered. Let me read it from verse 17. Then it happened, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, in that you have forsaken the commandment of the Lord and have followed birds. That was the testimony from a prophet of God to King Ahab. He for, you know, forsook the commandment of the Lord. He even killed the prophet. In verse 13 of that same first Kings chapter 18. He killed the prophet of God. That was the reason why Elijah <laughs> asked him into a contest. As we find in 1 Kings 18, verse 19 to 40 where the prophet of Baal and the true prophet of God, when they came together, 450 of them against Elijah, the prophet of God. Ahab saw the hand of God. Ahab saw what happened on that day when the fire fell from heaven. But because his heart has been hardened, he refused to repent. He remained in a sinful rebellion, which was also, you know, 
in conjunction with his wife, Jezebel. Brethren, take an honest assessment of yourself tonight. Are you living a lie? Or you are living in the truth according to the word of the Lord? And from our Bible text also, we saw that finally, Josephus, the king of Judah, came to visit him. And he had persuaded him to join him in battle in order to take down the ram of Gilead. Be careful of who you associate with. We may want to ask ourselves, how does Josephus got himself into this? And that led me to Josephus' quest for truth. When all the prophets of Hera but prophesy that go, the Lord is with you. You will conquer. But something in Josephus said, is there no true prophet that we can ask? Because the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit is in him. Brethren, we need to be like King Jehoshaphat to allow the Spirit of God to rule us at all times. Because 400 false prophets said the same thing. Go, you will conquer. But he was not satisfied. Because there, is a there was a spirit in him. That's why I said there, there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Lord gives understanding. We need to allow the spirit of the Lord to take hold of our lives, brethren. Joseph had to perceive, could recognize the falsehood in what they are saying. And finally, the king now told him, hey, there is one prophet, Micaiah, who has never told me anything good. And I ate him. Why will he eat the man of God? Because of the truth. Bread and truth hurts. Because he never prophesied anything good about him. But what the man of God has been telling him is the truth. So Micaiah was brought into the presence of the king to give him the final warning. Because God had already pronounced a death sentence upon Ahab. And he was looking for how it will come to pass. In 1 King chapter 20, 1 King chapter 20, in verse 42, 1 King 20 verse 42, And the, and the Bible says, Then he said to him, Thus says the Lord, Because you have let slip out of your hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, therefore your life shall go for his life, and your people for his people. That was the pronouncement against Hea. Also, in 1 King 21, 1 King chapter 21, verse 19. The Bible says, You shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, in the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. That was the pronouncement 
against Ahab. The death sentence was already upon him. But God gave him warning to repent. And the final warning came from Prophet Micaiah. Because he told him nothing but the truth about what was to happen. The lying spirit, if it possesses a man, make the heart of such a man harden to the truth, even when that man is about to be killed. That's what happened to King Ahab. So in the council meeting in heaven, when God was looking at how he's going to make the judgment to come to pass on King Ahab, the lying spirit came forward and said, I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophet because he loved to listen to untruthfulness. And because he, they, 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 he loved hearing what he wanted to hear, and they told him what he wanted to listen to, that line spirit volunteered himself, I mean, volunteered it, itself to go and carry out that assignment. to entice Ahab into his destruction. And Ahab took to that. Brethren, be careful. Are you in that situation tonight because someone tells you the truth and you call them out of your life? Or are you out of the church, out of the fold, because the truth was told to you. And you became offended because of the truth. And you left the church. And you left God completely. The Lord is calling you to repentance tonight. The Lord is calling you to himself. Remember. Why it is day, I must do the works of him that called me. Why you still have the opportunity to repent? Repent. Why do you have the opportunity to amend your way? Amend your way. Why you still have the opportunity to rebuild the spirit of light, to leave you alone? Please do. Because, brethren, you know yourself when you are living a lie. Even Ahab knew. Ahab knew that Micaiah was telling him the truth. That was the reason why he disguised himself when they went to war with, you know, with Ramot Gilead. He dressed the king of Judah to look like himself. He knew that what the man said was truthful. Brethren, you know that you are living a lie. You know that you are not being truthful to yourself. You can deceive others, but you can never deceive yourself. God is calling you tonight into repentance. Because when you look at the case of Saul, the king, the same thing happened to him when he went to Endor in 1 Samuel chapter 28 from verse 14. He went to, uh, to inquire from the familiar spirit because he sold himself into a lie. Remember, Satan is the father of lies. According to the book of John chapter 8 from verse 43 to 44, Satan is the father of lies. John 8, 43 to 44. Lying is the nature of the devil. 
He is an habitual liar. Brethren, God is calling all of us to, re to repentance tonight. When you begin to cleverly, cleverly present an alternate truth, you know that there is a danger at your door. That was what happened in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, when Satan, in the form of a serpent, came and deceived Eve because he twisted the fact. And that is what is happening in our days. It's a time for us to go to God in repentance tonight. Our text tonight, 2 Kings chapter 22, reminds us that God is to be feared. Our God is gracious. Our God is loving. At the same time, our God is a consuming fire. Our God is caring, loving, truthful to those who turn to him in faith. He's also holy. And he will not continually send this truth to us if we persistently reject him. So we must strive to obey God at all times. We must strive to allow the truth of the word of God to rule and reign in our heart. We should keep the line spirit far away from us. It's my prayer tonight that the Lord of heaven will touch each and every one of us. We will not be able to finish this tonight. We are going to continue next week, Wednesday. We need to displace every strong man that will not allow to fulfill God's destiny. And the Lord of heaven will strengthen us as we continue this journey in the mighty name of Jesus. As we close tonight, I want us to bow our head to pray. I want us to pray tonight that the Lord of heaven, I yield myself to the truth of your word. I yield myself unto you alone, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord of heaven, help me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalmist Christ unto the Lord. Say, create in me in a clean heart. And renew the right spirit within me. Do not take away your spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That should be our cry tonight. My Lord and my Father, we pray, Lord. Restore unto us, Lord, the joy of thy salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the spirit of life, let them get out of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my Father, every forces of hell that may not want us to fill our divine ordained destiny, we cast them out of our lives tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray, every soul that will be given to life spirit, I command such line spirit to leave you alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the freedom of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, we worship you. We want to walk the works of our Father. We want to walk the works of the kingdom. We want to win souls, oh Lord. We want to evangelize. Father, by your power we pray. Every strong man holding us in captivity, we break them out of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. That is so shall it be in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, we worship you. Daddy, we magnify your name. Let your will and your purpose be done in our lives. Let your counsel stand, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we yield ourselves unto you totally in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light, let it shine in us. Let your light reign and rule in our heart, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every darkness disappear, O Lord, 
In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, our Father. Lord, we worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And if you are, if you are listening to me tonight, you want to dedicate your life back unto Jesus. You've been living a lie. But tonight you realize yourself, just like King Nebuchadnezzar, he came to his senses and he praised the God in heaven. If you are dead tonight, you want to dedicate your life to Christ or you want to give your life to Christ, text safe or salvation to the number that is appearing on your screen tonight and someone will connect with you. I pray for you that the Lord will forgive all your sins. That the Lord himself will accept you into his kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the power to live above sin. The power to live above life. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, we worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Once again, thank you for joining us tonight. It's our time for tithe and offering. Tithe and offering is part of our worship. Let's give, and the Lord of heaven will give back unto us in many folds in the mighty name of Jesus. The various way of giving will be displayed on your screen. And as we pray on our tithe and offering tonight, the Lord will accept us and accept our gift in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray tonight, this is our offering and our tithe. Lord, accept us first and accept our offerings and our tithe in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my Father, I pray, bless each and every one of us, O oh Lord, and we rebuke poverty in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak abundance in every day of our lives. In Jesus' name. Thank you, our Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. The series continues next week, Wednesday. Tell someone, invite your friend as we study at his feet together. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord uphold you. May the Lord watch over you and keep you to the very end. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening. Amen. Egbe ori yi soke e yi yon. Ki a si gbe yi soke e yi le kwa yi ra yi. Ki o ba o go le wole. Join us this 9th of July, 2022, as we celebrate the first anniversary of our Yoruba Bible study and prayer meeting. Waka ti mi si, hour of inspiration. This time, it's an in-person service with intense worship, prayers, and the word all in Yoruba language. Time is 3 p.m. Eastern Time, and venue is 1000 Columbia Avenue, Linwood, PA, 19061. Ministry, Pastor Beatrice Asalu. <laughs> Jesus is Lord.